Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is August 28th, 2013, um, 50 years after King's speech. Uh, I hope people have had uh, found a way to remember that and think about it today. Um, and uh, we have a couple cool. of people joining us, which is super. Um, as we go, this is going to be uh, uh, this is a show where Monica um, Hardy and I have invited people who we had a lot of fun with this summer, and we're thinking about um, bringing that into the future, um, bringing it into the fall. Um, and so we have a mix of people with us tonight, and we probably uh, should do very, very quick introductions if we can. Um, if people can go in and out at times, um, feel free to do that, and then others might be able to join. Um, if you are listening to this and had, had hoped to get here, and there are 10 here now, I think, um, then you can listen in and participate in the chat room at edtechtalk.com um, slash ttt. That's edtechtalk.com slash ttt or slash live. Um, okay. Looks like Eva got here. Hi, Eva. Hi. Cool. Hi. Welcome. Hi, um, Eva, do you have any earbuds? Okay, so that's what tonight's show is going to be like. Uh, uh, we're going to be jumping in and out, yes. and we're going to be having people come and go, and, and which is great. Um, I am Paul Allison, um, and, and Monica and I have been doing this show along with Chris Sloan for a couple of years now. And uh, Monica did a lot of really exciting work with IDEC and IDEC. Um, and I did some work with some of the folks here and some of the students here with um, Youth Voices Summer Program. And I am going to mute her until she gets those on. Cool. Anyway, uh, so I, I was saying that we should do quick introductions, and that'll be kind of clear who everybody is. Um, I uh, am a consultant with the New York City Writing Project Tech Liaison and um, an English teacher in the Bronx at a, a school that we're just trying to open, spending all of my spare time trying to open a new school called New Directions Secondary School this August. Um, Matt, would you introduce yourself next, and we'll just go across the line here. Okay. Hi. Welcome. First Thanks. time on TTT, I think. Go yeah, ahead. it's the first time. Uh, I think about the third time I tried to make it, and then I finally <laughs> So thanks, for, thanks for not forgetting me. Um, my name is Matt Murray. I, uh, I'm an English professor at Westminster College. And uh, right now I'm actually in Mesa, Arizona as a part of Westminster's expansion. Uh, we're making a campus out here in Mesa. So that's exciting to see uh, the, the, the college grow. Uh, I'm also, I, I write children's books and I do something called the What If. Um, and we're a social enterprise that helps people enable shift. Um, and one of the areas we try to shift people's thinking is with, uh, or not, we don't shift them, but we try to help them shift their thinking is, is in the field of education. Um, so you can find out more about what we're doing with What If at uh, the whatifconference.com, and we're constantly looking for people to join this, this movement. Um, but my eyes were open really widely this a uh, couple months ago at the IDEC conference in uh, Boulder, and uh, that's or the reason I'm here still, and just really encouraged and inspired by what's going on in the, the world of alternative education. Very cool. Uh, Javaris, you were there as well at IDEC. Do you want to go with the next introduction, sir? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Javarius Jones, everyone. I'm a freshman at Eugene Lang College, the new school for liberal arts located in New York, New York. Um, it's been a big trans transition here um, being that I come from a very small rural town in Alabama um, but I'm loving it I've been here for about two weeks now and I just had my first um, I just started my first classes this week um, Monday to be exact I'm um, at the IDEC conference though um, or just IDEC it was something very new to me in the sense that Although there was some type of structure, um, everything really just um, was able to flow through the ideas that were um, exchanged and through the discourse that um, 
that came about about the different themes that we had each day. Um, I really enjoyed that being able to facilitate some of the workshops and being um, being a coffee talker. Um, yeah, and uh, I would have to say though, the one thing that was um, what was really talked about among the youth was that we should make sure that the youth voice is um, is is there more at the IDEX because although there were a few who were able to convey how they um, saw the youth in today's education system, um, there weren't there physically there weren't there were not that many. Um, so hopefully next year in South Korea um, that could change hopefully and yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so one of the things that we did this summer um, at Lehman College with uh, some of the folks who are here is that we did get a lot of youth and uh, teachers working together. Um, and so it seemed that that was one of the themes that, that went across both of our programs. Um, we should probably do some pretty quick introductions of the other people. I keep saying quick. I don't know why. But, <laughs> but take as long as you need. Um, <laughs> Marina, could you introduce yourself, please? <laughs> I, I saw you pick up the coffee, so I heard the, the drink. <laughs> no, anyway, introduce yourself. Welcome. You were one um, of the teachers with us this summer. Um, my name is Marina, and um, I'm a fourth grade teacher in a uh, New York City public school in the Bronx. And I was part of Youth Voices program this summer. And. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time learning about connected learning. Um, and now I'm at a point where I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to be putting that into place. Cool. Jim, go ahead. Um, I'm a, an English teacher at the Bronx High School for the Visual Arts, and I work this summer in Youth Voices summer program doing video. Cool. Grace, welcome. Hey First there. time on TTT. Woo. Glad to have you here. Glad it's working. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm a teacher consultant uh, for the New York City Writing Project. I work at a school in Flushing for all um, students who are new to the country, so they're all English language learners. Um, I work with the teachers and with the students, uh, but I was also super excited to be part of the Youth Voices program this summer. So I was with them for two fabulous weeks. Arig, are you there? Uh, coming and going, it looks like. Amori, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Introduce yourself, please. Um, my name is Amori Richards, and I attended the Youth the Youth Voices Summer Program. Um, I don't. What, what else should I Where say? do you go to school? What do you do? Oh, I go to school at the Bronx High School for the Visual Arts. Um, I'm an aspiring artist, and I'm also trying to get into law. So those are two things I want to accomplish. Very cool. And Aaliyah, welcome. Oh, it's not working. It's working. Go for it. <laughs> Hello, Aaliyah. We can hear you. We could. <laughs> no, we can't hear you, Aaliyah. Sorry. Uh, she'll work on that. Sorry, <laughs> is this better? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So once again. Oh, push that in again. Mm -hmm. We lost you again. Sorry. Yeah. Can you yeah. Now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I work for New Visions Charter High School for the Humanities. I'm a 10th grade English teacher. Um, this past summer I worked with Youth Voices um, and it was actually one, a really good learning experience for me and one that I hope to bring into my class room this coming year. Um, some of the things that I really liked about Youth Voices was just having students embark on their own research projects, very self-directed and very high interest. Um, so I definitely would like to bring that into the classroom just to see how that works with my students. So I'm excited for the year to come. Great. And, and 
And then uh, I'm going to mute you again, but please unmute when you are ready to talk again. Arig, introduce yourself, please. Uh, we don't have sound yet. We did earlier. Arig, we don't have sound yet. Uh, Eva, do you want to try? It is a work in progress. Uh, I just introduced myself? Yes, there you go. Eva? Are you talking? We can't hear you. Um, can you... There you go. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Eva. I go to Harvest Collegiate in, the, in Manhattan, um, 14th Street and 34th West. Um, I did Youth Voices this summer, but... Um, a few of the other students, and I had a great time. Um, you and Javarius uh, are not very far away. Um, you're kind of who? geographically in this same same neighborhood. Javarius, Javarius, are you still there? Okay, Arig, can we hear it from you? Okay, we're still doing sound tests here. Really appreciate everyone trying to jump in here in your own ways. And it sounds like it's on now, yes. No, it's not. Thank you for your patience, folks. Um, Arig, uh, work on it a little bit. I'm not sure what she should do. <laughs> plug it into one of the other. Yeah, I don't know. Um, all right. Let's, uh, Arik, work on that, and we'll, we'll, ca we'll catch you up as we go here. Oh, no, we're losing the IDEC folks. IDEC folks, please come back. We still want to hear from you and everything you've done. Karen, welcome. Hi there. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. I was, was going to just watch the stream and not jump in, but then when I saw Arig and Amari and everybody here, <laughs> I needed to jump in and say hi. So hi, everybody. And hi. I'll stay for a few okay. minutes, but I want to free up a spot for... Uh, oh, Arig, we can hear you, I think. Oh, it's right okay. here? Yay! Yes. Hi, okay. yeah. Hi. Thanks. So, Karen, thanks for bouncing back and forth if, with that. Your ability, but I, I, over in the chat room, please invite the um, please don't uh, invite the IDEC people to come back uh, if they can. Irene, uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us what you've been up to? Um, my name is Irene, and I'm going to be a senior next year at the Young Women's Leadership School of Astoria. Um, and I've been sleeping. <laughs> if that counts. <laughs> that so, counts. So. Okay. Arig, can you talk? I mean, sorry to put you on the spot, but uh, I'm not sorry. Also, um, you're, um, you're, uh, you, we emailed a little bit, and you said your family and your friends have been kind of um, affected by what's going on in Egypt. Can you just mention a little bit about that? Um, as I mean, we, yeah. I mean, it's um, it's just crazy right now because I mean, my grandma mm. and um, so forth, my aunt and. My grandparents live right near the the um, uh, Rabah Square, so it's it's crazy because you it's just it's not fair what's happening, and you barely hear of hello. Yeah. And like you barely hear of what's yeah, actually. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, like you could barely you barely hear of what's actually happening. Like you know, 700 people are dot people are just being killed for no reason. I mean, I just I think it's. Unfair. So, have you thought at all about what what and um, uh, Javarius mentioned earlier about getting youth voice out there more? What youth voices might, ha what impact that might have um, on even that situation? I, I think it could raise awareness a little bit because I like what you'll hear. Like you'll actually like Al Jazeera will actually tell you what's happening. They'll actually be there videotaping it. While you have the, while you have the actual like your actual the Egyptian media news telling a whole different story about about like them like 
I feel like the youth voices is a chance for me to um, express my opinion on what's happening. Uh -huh. Write an edit editorial or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. Darcy, do you want to introduce yourself? Welcome. Darcy? Uh, can we hear you? You? Can't hear you yet. Are you trying to talk? All right, look, look. I, <laughs> this was going to be one of those things where people were jumping in and out. Um, I, uh, let, me, let me propose that we think a little bit about the impact uh, at moving toward change um, of teachers and students working together. That's what both of us have in common that happened in IDEC. That's what happened in this Youth Voices program as well. So does somebody have some thoughts about that? What's the impact on teachers? What's the impact on students um, when that happens? And you can talk about it from your own experience this summer or just abstractly if you'd like. Who wants to jump on that question? I can say something about that. Good, good, good. I was just thinking that one of the best things about it is that you really get to um, be close to students as they learn and see them actually going through the process of what excites them and what really makes them want to learn and go into a topic with um, great depth. That was one of the things that I got out of it. And um, just also like challenging different or finding different ways of um, finding resources to back up opinions that you have or questions that you want to have answered. One of the things that I was talking to my coworkers about today was one of the exercises that we did, which was like I think we were asked to find something um, on our topic, like a piece of research, and then after we found that, it was like okay, we'll now find a video, and then now find um, you know a more challenging article to read, and so sometimes we don't think about all of the possibilities. So watching students go through that process and none of them saying, I can, I don't know how, but just asking for support and just like really allowing um, the Youth Voices facilitators to like push, you know, even the teachers through the process. Because there were some things that um, were done during that time that I didn't even think that I'd be able to do as a teacher and I was able to do it. And to just learn right alongside the students also helped me to remember what process I go through as a learner so that I don't jump too far ahead and that I try to stay on with learning. So that's pretty much it. Like, it's just um, the best thing about, I guess, learning with students is just having that chance to um, walk that walk as a student, if that makes sense, you know, as opposed to someone who's supposed to know everything or someone who's supposed to be a facilitator. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Anybody? We lost your sound again, Enrique. <laughs> Keep oh, adding, there you go. go ahead. Um, adding on to what Miss Hayes said, I think that like in the classroom we get feedback from each other as students, whereas in Youth Voices we got feedback from teachers, which which was like. Which also help. Say more. What do you mean? Um, like we had the Google Plus community, so whenever we posted something, let's say, um, even on Youth Voices, teachers commented, they're like, "Oh, I like, I like what you said there. Maybe you could improve there, like in that certain area." So that was, um, so that was good. Other thoughts? Darcy, can you talk yet? Uh, you'll need to unmute or something. There we go. There we go. All right. Got me. Darcy, introduce yourself, please. Hi. Tell us more Hi. about iDeck and get us going here. Oh, go ahead. Gosh. Okay. Um, I am from Oregon. I'm an uh, organizer, a community organizer with the Institute for Democratic Education in America. Uh, we were the national hosts for iDeck this year. Um, which was amazing, 500 people from all over the world, 33 countries, 38 United States, and it was incredible. Networking and, and learning and meeting people and listening to people's ideas and thoughts and um, celebrating and struggling together. It was really phenomenal. 
Mm-hmm. And what about on this issue of students and, and uh, teachers working together? Was it that present or? There was. Um, there were youth present, um, which was really cool. Um, not as many as some people hoped, but um, mm-hmm. I think part of that, when you have when you have a gathering like that, it's just by its nature um, a little exclusive because of the cost of travel and the cost of lodging and, and just all of the financial um, burdens that are there. So unfortunately, um, you know, that's a reality. But there were youth present. Um, there were some, some struggles, um, some really hard moments that we dealt with, I think, really well. And it's exciting to see, oh gosh, there goes my phone. Um, <laughs> it's exciting to see those things happen and be able to work through those struggles together. And um, and I thought it was really powerful and really positive. And Can you describe uh, one or two of those in a little more oh. detail? Or? Um, and what we learned. There, there were some, there were some. Well, let's see. There was one moment that was particularly powerful, um, where we had a gentleman um, who was an Israeli and a woman who was Palestinian. Um, and they have the two backwards, but, uh, but they spoke to their their own pain and their own issue, uh, feeling like their voices weren't being heard. Um, I think in the the world in general. Um, and then their feeling of being isolated in, in that place. Um, so yeah, so things like that. They were unexpected and, and spontaneous and and uh, and really powerful learning moments. Mm-hmm. So um, handing it over to <laughs> next year's um, IDEX team uh, was was really great because that is primarily youth driven. Uh, they brought a huge force of young people from South Korea, and it was it was awesome to watch them <laughs> figure out how they're going to move forward and. Uh, planning and, and moving and sharing and yeah, it's cool. Mm-hmm. So, back and forth here a little bit. Um, back to Youth Voices, I guess, and uh, our experience this summer. But anything else anybody wants to bring up? Um, we d- we did say, and we do want to spend a, a lot of time thinking about um, how, like, both the IDEC experience but also the Youth Voices experience that um, most of us right now on this call had um, were wonderful experiences in the summertime, but it's not enough to leave it there. So how do we think about bringing those experiences and moving towards some change, which, Matt, I guess your organization is, is about too. But So who would want to take that on a little bit? Well, Marina, Marina, maybe um, Matt, jump in when you want. But yeah. Marina, um, do you do you want to talk a little bit about what you're thinking about for the fall? Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I you know I I got so much out of the summer that um, right away I was thinking about where can can this fit? Um, there's a lot of changes happening. Um, in my school in terms of curriculum so I wanted to I, I made time I you know I, I sent an email to my principal a few days after the program was over and um, I I talked to her about it and I said I did all this great work and it was really amazing and I want to continue doing this work with my students which I kind of had started a little bit in um, at the end of the school year and now that I feel like I've learned so much more I have so many more ideas and um, we are we were able to talk and negotiate like finding some carved space for open access in the computer lab um, and I hope to work with that time to let my kids have inquiry based work um, because they're going to be involved in a lot of programs where they're not going to have as much choice this year in what they have to do so is that the changes you're referring to in the curriculum, the lack of Yeah, choice? in terms of like the literacy, we've like adopted some um, new curriculums and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
But but the, on the positive side, what I can say, and I'm wondering if other people have thought about this in some way, um, it's a, you got to your principle, right? So you got to the, I don't know, a change maker in your building. Certainly, doing it without your principle would be hard, it seems. Um, and you found space, right? You found, like, by that I mean a, a real structure where this might fit. Yeah, one of the things I had to do before, I did before the end of the school year was I put together a binder, I guess basically like an inquiry of the work I had done with the Letter to the Mayor campaign. Um, and I had given it as an observation B. And that was kind of how the conversation started between me and her. And I wanted to make sure that um, she had taken a look at it. And I think that putting all the stuff together, um, the process the students came to, even deciding their topic, um, working drafts, conversations that I had with them in threads, um, and some of the articles that I had chosen, I was really making an argument for the um, incorporation of technology. So I, I know she knows I feel very strongly about it, and I'm very passionate mm -hmm. about it, and I'm in this phase where I'm really desiring to be so knowledgeable about it and to bring it to kids because they are 21st century learners and to have a, them have to let, allow them a little time to do that. So anybody else with a thought on, on, on those kinds of topics about showing your passion, connecting with somebody with, with some power who can make some hap something happen, and then working with that person to, to build some structures? <laughs> Those are a lot of topics, especially to throw that on students. I don't know if it's even appropriate, but let me let me ask anyhow. Well, I'll jump in real quickly. Um, Good. That's yeah. actually one of the things that we try to accomplish with what is, is to make the connections between the ideas and the, the people with the resources to make the actions that happen, right? Um, one of our fundamental beliefs is that uh, there's, there's more than two groups of people, but for this case, like let's say there's two groups of people, the ideas and then the people, again, with the resources and abilities um, to, to take action. But the sad part is the people with the ideas oftentimes, due to age, finances, or whatever, can't take complete action on their ideas. Um, on the other hand, the people with the resources oftentimes don't have ideas. Um, so one of the things we're trying to do is to facilitate this connection between the two. Um, but we're not doing it saying, like, we're just going <laughs> to make all the connections. We're trying to reach out to people to join this, um, to put on your own what-if events, to engage in dialogue through our various platforms so that these connections can be made. Um, we've just started. Uh, it's not like we, we've conquered the world or anything with this yet. But I want to invite everybody to either contact me directly or uh, visit our website to see about ways that you can get involved we are reaching out more and more to schools, um, traditional and non-traditional schools, uh, to get students and teachers alike, administrators, whomever, to uh, start participating in this. Um, but at the same time, if you have other ways that we can help you make these connections and share your ideas to a larger group, um, again, please contact me, let me know, and this is what we're this is what we're about. This is what we're trying to do. So all the ideas we're sharing here can. Uh, Cool. I wanted to say something about the summer. If I go could. ahead, Grace. Yep. Um, Just want to identify. Um, I think one of the things that was so powerful about the summer that I actually saw it in action that mirrored the beliefs of the New York City Writing Project was that teachers were actually doing what students were doing alongside the students. And it was amazing to see how they were able to sort of feed each other and sort of spur each other on and come to an understanding of what it meant to learn from the perspective of an inquiry model of, of pursuing your own interest and to ask a hard question, and even before that to develop the hard question, then to sort of look for the difficult answers and to negotiate the difficult spaces where those answers might be lurking. And for teachers to be doing that alongside students was incredible, both for the teachers and for the kids who were involved. And I, I think the level of, of, of just 
the level of engagement was number one, and that was the summer. But I'm hoping that what lives and what continues on, both for the teachers and the kids, is that sense that the process was the most important thing. Not what was your topic, you know, what was the content, you know, who told you what to pursue, but do you know how to look for information? Do you have a hunger for information? And to me, something that we did at my school today was to sort of ask, well, why are you a teacher? And one of the reasons I said I was a teacher was I want kids to be curious. I want them to be able to say, I want to know something. And I, as a teacher, don't necessarily want to, want to tell them what that is that they should know. But if they have a hunger for learning something and can... Uh, through an experience like Youth Voices or an experience in school, find a way to pursue that hunger, that to me is amazing. And I think that is the threshold that we stepped over this summer. Okay. I hope I wasn't too, being too grandiose. I didn't mean no, to. No, that's, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do want to I do want to invite Nancy and uh, Tulu um, to join us here. Maybe just briefly introduce yourself. You just joined us. Hey. Nancy. Hi. Uh, I'm Nancy. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I recently, just last Monday, opened a school called the Mosaic School. I met Darcy and Matt and Monica at IDEC. Um, and uh, just to go back to your question about how we carry the summer, or did you want me to hang Yeah, back? go ahead. That sounds like a good way to go. Um, to ha how to carry this. I want to know everything about your new school too. But go ahead. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. We just had our second democratic meeting this afternoon, and it, it was so powerful how um, how it's evolved so quickly, and, and the level of engagement that the kids had in the process this afternoon. I was blown away because I didn't expect them to be as engaged uh, in the, the. They're creating the school with us, with the the founding parents and myself. Mm -hmm. um, and what they age were are these young people? five to ten. So the the seven, eight, nine, tens, they're um, the ones that are really stepping up to to voice their um, what they want. You know, today what they wanted was a after school Pokemon club. They wanted cursive class, a math class, an engineering class. They wanted um, to help find ways to make everyone feel safe, whatever they're doing, whenever they're doing it. Um, it's it was really cool, and, and to, to go back to the question of how we bring the summer and carry it through, um, I, re I feel it's in the connections that we make. I learned, my, my whole world was opened up. I learned so much from, um, from people. I mean, you know, Matt started this giant Google Doc for us that had links to pretty much every, I picked his brain for every single thing that he knew, and I just keep going through and, you know, watching TED Talks, being exposed to um, even entrepreneurial um, that are you know not quite just education because really what I'm doing is starting my own business um, and, and trying to um, you know keep parents engaged and to keep them um, really active in, in, in the process of creating the school uh, from the ground up and then sharing this message and I'm finding that a lot of people are finding us and um, really curious about what we're doing um, but then you know linking to people's Facebook pages and then seeing what they're posting and reading what they're posting and it's it's fuel it's given me a lot of strength especially here in the beginning I'm working um, pretty full days here and um, because I'm it's I'm pretty much like a one-woman show with the school and we've got um, 11 kids and a couple homeschoolers that join us but um, those those types of connections and like I, I kind of posted this in the chat room for me to feel like I'm part of a broader movement keeps me going every single day. If I felt isolated, like I'm just this one person running this one little school, um, I, I think I would have probably laid down and just, you know, died from exhaustion. But uh, I have so much energy and everything I do, I do with so much joy and, and just um, because of the community that I found and then the people who keep encouraging me. Well, inspiring words, too. I have a too. question. Go ahead. Yeah, Eva. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, for Nancy, are you the principal for the, the school that you want to make? Um, 
Uh, I I am the I'm, I'm I'm the principal. I'm the teacher. I'm the the nurse. I'm every. I mean, it's it's me. And um, yeah. Well, and Eva, you're in a, a a brand new school. It's a year old now, right? But how how has it been yeah. to to grow Harvest? And have students been involved in uh, in building it in some way? I I feel like our teachers really made a a big effort to get all the students involved because um. For the orientation day last year, um, they introduced all of the students together, and then after that, it was um, you walked into this room, and it was just tons and tons of clubs, so you could get more active into the schools. So it was all like robotics, photography class, um, the step team, and there was there was just the cooking club. So I guess that's what got a lot of students um, excited for the school year. Not, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, you used Youth Voices with one of your teachers, with Kieran Chuhardi, um there already. But how did how did can you imagine your conversation with Kieran or other teachers there about how what your experience this summer has been like and and how that might fit at Harvest? I mean, I'm sure she'll ask me when I when I when I go back to school. She'll ask me how the summer program one, mm -hmm. um, and she'll, uh, uh, I think she'll probably try to, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really know, I think we're still going to be using Youth Voices, because she, um, Will she you really have her again? Uh, I, I don't, I don't think so, I signed up for another class, mm -hmm. the, this, uh, it would, uh, I think I signed up for some other class about some Weird book. I, I don't remember, <laughs> but I, I don't think I'm gonna have her. Okay. I'm sure I'm not gonna have her this year. So back to the question, though. How do you think? And and there are lots of different ways to think about this. How do you think you might be able to bring your summer experience back to your school? Back to your oh, own I learning, mean, perhaps too. But yeah. I mean, we. I learned a lot of stuff. With you guys about Google Docs and the the croc stuff from Use Voices, um, I learned how to uh, more um, how to research my my stuff in a more more in, more in a just like in a way that's more better for me and stuff because I, before that I would use some Wikipedia or something and with this it was just I learned more stuff. Very cool. Voices. Amori or Arig, any questions or thoughts to throw in? We want to get to Tulu here too. I don't know if Arig's trying to talk. Oh, I think. She I, like, I'm. Okay. Um, I'm pretty excited for next year because um, my uh, 11th grade English teacher wants to um, start using Youth Voices in her classroom. So and, she, and your school, your school already has a structure where you, as a twelfth grader, um, are sort of a, a co-teacher with the eleventh graders. With the eleventh yeah. grade teachers, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so because you know how we wrote this, I believe essays and college essays and so forth. So I told her how whose voice is is sort of engaging because you get feedback from the community and you feel more positive about writing. So she wants to start using that in her classroom next year. So I'll help her out. Um, Tulu, do you want to jump in? Welcome. Introduce yourself. We don't hear you yet, but we are patient about that, as we have seen. <laughs> uh, not yet. I still can't hear you. So work on that. <laughs> um, and jump in when you can, Tulu. No, still not still not hearing you. So the, the little flower thing on top right is a way to, to kind of check your sound properties, I think. So, oh, there we go. Go ahead. Right, I think I just muted it. All right. Okay. Welcome. So uh, my name is Kulu, and um, I was Dick, and uh, the work that I do really is education, 
it's like it's it's more about the pedagogy, what kids are learning, how they're learning it, why they're asking these very tough questions, trying to rearrange classroom in a way that all the power dynamics at work are equal to every kid who comes through. You know, given agency, given sense, given voice, given a sense of community, knowing yourself as you walk into the classroom and your responsibility to your community for why you're getting educated. You know, um, I'm Nigerian. Um, I do some work as um, as an editor. I used to work for Truth Out. I used to work for a few other sites doing some writing and some editing. Uh, but currently, I'm involved in a multimedia collective. So I'm trying to start a distinct generation of multimedia collective that just gets people into telling their stories and doing it in a way that actually moves not conversation but policy forward. You know, so the whole point of it is to try to you know encourage something else by people being able to share part of their history and, and the things that they've been through. And the, the the point for me is that that's what education should do. Education should be central to you know your story, it should be central to your history. Education should be central to you know everything that you've been through. It should reflect your reality. And that if it's not doing that, then it's irrelevant, you know, whether it counts as the common core or whatever. So um, I have this opportunity to be working with some high school students this uh, this uh, this fall, just like I did a couple of years ago. And the hope is to just, you know, rearrange the curriculum so that everything that they're learning right now would be learned differently in a way that actually reflects community values, in a way that, you know, that gets them engaged in all levels of, of their body, so not just their mind, but their spirits and their souls. And so the, the work, I guess, that I'm trying to do in the future is something that tries to address all these all these gaps in education where kids actually walk in. They might get the knowledge of chemistry, of algebra, but they live with their souls, um, you know, sort of broken down and their spirits are destroyed. And we have to kind of fix that when we talk about the new education curriculum. So, Chula, I, 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 very inspiring words. Can you tell us a, li a little more about where you're doing this and, and the high school students you're going to be working with? Uh, the high schools are in Detroit and Ipsen, Michigan. So, you know, um, I live in Detroit, uh, but I go to school in Ypsilanti, in Michigan. So uh -huh. I'm trying to do some partner work as well between the students, you know, get students from Ipsen and Detroit just talking to each other and finding, you know, the core backgrounds that they have and how they can and then start helping themselves, really. So how do you start with those students, and then what do you, and what's the path you take? A little bit. Well, you start by you start by getting the stories on tape. You know, you really want an in-depth moment with the students. So you you, you work with video? Go ahead, yeah. Right, you want to engage them. You want to get the stories somewhere, right? So um, I think every one of them we have to go through that process of actually sort of debriefing. They get to tell everything they've been through that's relevant to them being there at that moment. Like what brings you here to school today? You know. And by, and, 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 and by doing that, you find out what's relevant to that student. And everyone's story is sort of the path that guides them through life, right? So we know that. So any kid in the program has to be able to tell why they're there. And by being able to state that, we know what to do to, you know, sort of branch them as, as you know, in whatever path they want to eventually take. So, Tula, what's the program? That you're involved uh, in? it's, called, it's called Bright Futures, and it's something that uh, it's an after-school program. And you know, we have cooking club, we have chess club, we have step dance club. But the the hope is just to get them into a kind of community after school because sometimes it feels like we're trying to undo what goes on from eight to three fifty, you know, three fifteen or two fifty. You know, like we're after school, we're trying to say that wasn't the real education you should have gotten. You know, here's here's what it looks like in a community family. People who love you, who are here to support you, and if you have any questions, we're going to answer them. We're not going to send you to the office because you've been belligerent. We're going to try to talk you out of whatever's going through you. You know, so yeah. that's so that's the program that we have. Tootle, I'm going to jump on that just for a second and say that yeah. say that at our at our future show, we should have some after school program people mm -hmm. on. And teachers like myself and other people here in the New York City Writing Project and, and other teachers who feel exactly the same way, that that um, mm -hmm. our class is about, you know, changing what's going on between eight and eight and three or whatever it is, right? So so right. I so I just encourage you to think that there are teachers who are working in that building eight to three who have the same perspective you do. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. about about, mm -hmm. you know, getting to, to real education in some way. Hey, I, but right, so so right. you know, so I, 
which which makes me think that um, that is part of part of what we need to do. We need to kind of recognize that we're all kind of trying to do that. I maybe we're not, but but there are certainly mm -hmm. enough people out there trying to make the change for kids. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. and I love how you've described it. It's about you know your story moving toward policy, right? I mean that's one of the right, things right, you said. Yeah. Right, exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. And that's, that's the most important thing, just to add that, you know, every every kid that we're working with in the schools, eventually we want to link them with congressional aides. We want to link them with, you know, with, um, you know, members in the Senate. We want to link them with lawyers so that they can actually start acting with their power, the power that they have to move policy around, you know, so that everything that, that they have around them. And in Detroit, I mean, the stories are kind of complex because... Detroit has lost 200 schools in you know a decade. It's lost over 100 in the last seven years. You know, Detroit is going through a period where you have an emergency manager, which means that the, the city doesn't have any kind of popularly elected governance. So you have all these issues. You have 80,000 abandoned buildings. You have 600 teachers who were fired a couple of years ago and replaced with uh, temporary agents called Teach for America. So you have this problem in Detroit where um, the education is in no way reflecting everything that the kids are going through. When in your neighborhood, you're walking out of your neighborhood and you have, you know, the, the, the number of houses that are abandoned outnumber the ones that aren't abandoned. And yet you still have to go to school and learn something that's completely disengaged from the reality of your city, of the time that you're living in, and of the city, and, and of the, the surrounding that you're trapped in. And, and that's, you know, it's just, it's completely, to me, it's completely criminal to these kids to have to get the eight hours of school without having any kind of, you know, engagement. So what we've done is some of them have gone into the schools and we engage in doing a, an English class. You know, we just take, we take a, a board member who can sort of decompress the history for them. And I think that's what we have to do, you know, eventually, right? We, we keep on invading these spaces, right? We go into the public schools during the daytime and after school and work with the students, you know, whether or not we're certified. May I ask a question? Go, um, Grace. Yeah. I think that is just amazing and inspiring and, and makes me want to go into the school year with a positive attitude and say, mm -hmm. let's find those niches, let's find those places where we can, you know, where we can sort of highlight the youth voices, where we can give the students the voice, where we can capitalize on who the kids are in this age of so many different um, mandates coming down. So my question is for both the students and the other mm -hmm. teachers that are here, where do you see the niches? Where do other people see the hope for continuing the work, for, for moving students forward and being able to pursue their their questions and, and doing what Tulio was doing in the after school program, where can we fit this in during the day? I I want to find the hope in this new environment because I know it's there. I just think that we're somewhat overwhelmed with some of the new mandates that we in the service of understanding them we may have to put aside our creativity in finding our place in them. So where can we find a way to continue the work that so many of you have started? Where's, like Marina, you found a way last year. How might you continue it this coming year? And, and Arig and Amori, how might you bring your voice into your classrooms this coming year? I put the question out to anyone who can help answer it? Maury, do you want to jump on that? Um, Anything you're thinking, too. Yeah. Um, okay. Wait, hello? Yeah, we hear you. Go ahead. Can you repeat that? I couldn't really understand. So, my, my screen is sketchy. It, putting it in a maybe um, uh, sort of a realistic way. Where in this age of testing and accountability and assessment, where do you find in the classroom, whether as a teacher or a student, that you can bring out your own voice without being 
concerned about who is assessing or evaluating or mandating. Where's the place for all this wonderful work that you've started? Um, well, I would I would want to say first that I would start on the computer, maybe have a chat session with my friend, and we discuss something. Um, because I wouldn't feel judged if I'm just talking to someone that shares my own opinion. Um, or and I wouldn't really feel that stressed out about it. Now, if I'm in school and a teacher may give me an assignment that I don't agree with or I have a conflict with, I can't really say that I don't enjoy the assignment because I don't have well, that type of power to not do it. I have to do what they say. Not that what mm -hmm. they say is, um... Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. We hear you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So what I'm saying is that if, um, if we're given computer work, like we can type up what we want to search up and um, we're allowed to be in groups, then I can enjoy that more than me standing alone and not hearing any opinions. And I think I got that vibe from the Youth Voices program. Arik, are you jumping in to say something? Um, Go ahead, Tula. Oh, all right. Um, so, say that in Detroit, there's a thing called the uh, um, Detroit Future Schools. And it, it's where they get to pair an art an artist with a teacher in the classroom, oh, and this is something that you know a radical idea that was cooked up from the Bard School, right? That the way kids learn best is when they have something creative, whether it's math, whether it's English. They should have an artist in the same room with a, with um with 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 the teacher who's certified, and they can run workshops as the day is going on, so that it's not you know this. It's not. It's not a nine to five. You imagine if you're running workshops every day in the classroom. So it kind of changes the dynamic. They're still gonna pass their tests. They're still gonna, you know, fulfill all the bullshit that the state wants them to do. But more importantly, they're gonna have some kind of fun with it, right? So they started with, uh, with you know, with poets who were teaching English. They started with, you know, just just musicians who were teaching math, just doing some kind of radical stuff. And I mean, I really think this is how it works, right? That you have the system that, that's been in place for years. And more than likely, it's not going to change anytime soon. And <laughs> you have to find the, those niches. You know, they exist, but they have to be introduced in a way that's manageable in the system. It can be something so completely radical that people reject it. And, and, and the reason I say this is, you know, even a lot of radical initiatives have been rejected in Detroit. And that's, this is a place that's historically black. It's a place that has a lot of innovative ideas. You know, it started some of the first Afrocentric schools in the nation. It's, you know, it does some really, really radical things, um, and it's a, it's it's at the forefront of all the necessary changes that happen culturally in this country. And at the same time, you still hear from a lot of a lot of parents that they just want their kids to be educated. So I'm thinking that you know, what is this education that kids are being you know forced to go through, and to what cost? Is it about you know half of the college graduates not being able to find jobs in the chosen fields? Is it about you know people actually being able to create what, whatever is in their mind? And so um, ultimately, I'm saying that you have to find those niches. You also have to realize that at the end of the day, you're dealing with um, you're dealing with some very strong um, traditionally held values. That says the kids still have to learn their math and sort of eat their vegetables, and you don't have to run up against that and change that before so these niches can even be explored. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, I, I wanted to bring you back into that dialogue a little bit. I mean, do did have you started your own school because you've given up on the niches in the other schools, or <laughs> I don't want to assume, but I just want to guess here. Um, I uh, my my experience before this was a little uh, was pretty interesting as well. I I spent the first three years of my teaching in a public school, and then um, spent my last three years helping start a. Uh, a independent Quaker school um, and when I started there I was 26 and was the only licensed teacher and one of um, two and a half staff members um, so I had a lot of freedom to research and, and they just said do whatever you know we, we don't know what to do you do whatever you want to do mm -hmm. um, and, and through that I um, 
I mean, really, I, I just, I come from more, more of an angle that I just don't believe that uh, people need to be coerced, manipulated, punished, or rewarded into learning. Um, I, I just think that learning itself brings joy. And a lot of what I was doing as a teacher in the public school and even at the, the other school that I um, was helping to start, um, I felt like what we were doing was just irrelevant. Like, you know, a lot of the, the things that we were trying to teach were ways to keep kids busy so that they don't have conflict, so they don't experience um, life, really. And, and I, none of it seemed relevant to their lives. Um, and so that kind of drove me to dig even further, and I found the Alternative Education Resource Organization and, and found Summerhill and the Sudbury Schools and uh, Peter Gray and really started researching into the democratic free schools. And so I had to, um, once I, I, I really found my, my home there. Um, and in just working with, I've been working with these kids on a part-time basis since January, but working with them now full-time, um, it's really, it's true. I mean, I just, people don't have to be forced to learn. And if it's something's not relevant to them, they're not going to learn it. You can make someone memorize anything, but it's not um, true. It's not true learning in, in my. Um, it doesn't hold with them or carry with them. It doesn't have meaning to them. And what's really exciting is when I see kids teaching each other, and, and they see everything, everyone as a learning, uh, someone that they can learn from. They see everything as something they can learn from. They don't think that learning is defined by a time in a classroom in a space. Um, a lot of the kids that I have in the school have never been to traditional schooling, and they are probably the coolest children you could ever imagine to work with because they are engaged in everything they do. They they don't, um, you know, they don't. They're never bored. They they never sit. You know, they just um, are fully present in in their moments and in their learning, and they take ownership of all of it. So let me twist this right at the end here a little bit. And Tulu, I wanted to ask, what if your students that you'll be working with this year could connect with Eva and Amori? And Arig looks like she's uh, dropped out here, though. And 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 then um, Nancy, your students sound like they're kind of similar age to Marina's students. It would be interesting to. It does seem to me that it's wonderful when. People from different places, just like we're doing right here, that when students can do that, two magical things happen. Hi, Arig. So, Arig, so I'm going to leave that question there, and then just ask people to just kind of go through and just say leave some final thoughts. And, and Amori, could we begin with you? Final thoughts for tonight? Um, well, I, I enjoy meeting up with you with you guys again. I met some new faces. And I also like the idea that um that to Talu, Talu proposed. Uh -huh. um, Talu. Talu, sorry. Um, I, lo I love his idea. Also, nah, my screen keeps blacking out. We got um, you there. Keep going. Yeah. Right. Um, I would like to meet. I would like to do this again next summer, or maybe mm -hmm. meet up again in another video chat um, during the school year to see how we've gone from there, from this convo. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's how I want to leave this video. That's cool. Yeah. Arig, you have any thoughts as we're leaving here? <laughs> you're not on yet. <laughs> He's coming. Hello. There you go. Hi. Okay. Um. I think. Wait. So just. Any final thoughts as you as as we're closing the show tonight? Um. Wait. Are you going to do this program next summer? Well, mm -hmm. we hope to. But in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of other <laughs> times that we could connect. So we want to think about that a little bit. Oh. Um, I I think I'm just gonna I think I'm gonna start writing for Youth Voices, like continue what I was where I left off, because it was um, I really enjoyed writing because there was a lot of support. So yeah. yeah. And and certainly certainly I, it's it's so amazing that that Egypt has has been bumped off the front pages. So you know, getting that back 
and our attention would be great. And hearing a voice of a student about it is kind of amazing. So, but yeah. Eva, any thoughts as we're closing? Um, I like Paul's inspiring speech about the, the bright idea that he has going on with the after school stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be doing, I'm still going to be writing on news voices. Um, through this school year because of my school, or because I like to also write. Um, I'll probably be posting like small stuff like Ari does with her poems and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like to do the same thing that Amori said about um, continuing on this, this conversation throughout the school year to see how, uh, how uh, hopefully, there's gonna, hopefully there's going to be more people next time, like Talia and Kwan Age and yeah. everybody could join us. I, I don't know, I think my school, since the new un incoming um, ninth graders will be joining, I guess we'll have more people to comment. Yep, yep. You should work that. Grace, any final thoughts? Those students, great to hear that everybody is keeping the ideas alive and thinking forward. Love it. Yeah, well, you didn't say to finish it. Marina? Oh, um, I just wanted to say that what everybody said, it, it's so inspiring and hopeful, and all the little bits of things that. Everyone who I've never met before, the IDEC people, um, I feel like it's it's really given me more hope to keep working and weaving these ideals into my classroom, even when I do have some constraints upon me, because um, it is alive there, and it's just that it's a little bit harder to find it. Mm. And you have you you'll have how many in your class your fourth grade class this year? Do you know? Um, I could have up to thirty two. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You're amazing what you do with that. <laughs> but yeah, Matt, any final thoughts? And thanks for yeah, hanging yeah. out with us tonight. Yeah, no, I know. I've, I've got uh, my colleague from Westminster. He's downstairs waiting in the lobby for me. But it's uh, it's dinner time here, so I. I so we're about I, to finish, but yeah. Great. Yeah, no, but but I was just gonna say it's a testament. Uh, the he can wait. The conversation is great. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing, especially well, everything, but especially hearing and seeing the students here. Um, and you know, really, you know, us old people, we can talk about the students, student-centered education, all we want, and all these things, how we want to reform education. But it, none of it works unless the students step up and, and do it. Um, and it's just really great to see and hear these students not just talking about it, but actually leading the way. And uh, I know we only have a few here. Um, but I have confidence that there's even more out there. And I just want to applaud all the, the students who are who are a part of this and encourage them to keep doing it and uh, using us any way we can to uh, keep this movement going. So hey Matt, your um, your organization, how can we connect with that? Um, it's I sent a link. I'll put another link here that's through the the. What but if. somebody might be listening to this on their bike on a podcast. So. Oh well, it's <laughs> thewhatifconference.com. Um, and you can also follow me on uh, the Huffington Post, uh, Matt Murray, M-U-R-R-I-E. Um, just posted something about uh, IDIC in Alternative Education just last week or two weeks ago. Um, and people can contact, let us know how you want to get involved, how to hold your own event, and uh, let us know what we can do for you. Super. Thanks. Nancy, any final thoughts? Um, I, just, you were, I think we're getting ready to mention connecting uh, some of the classrooms, and mm. I would love that. I would love to do a Google Hangout with my kids and, and I would like to have them to have a global perspective if we could connect with classrooms around the world. So if um, anyone, you know, I, we put the link to my school's website on the other chat site, uh, the Mosaic School, um, and you can get a hold of me through there, um, through the website, www.mosaic-school.org. Very cool. And I like what you said, I think it was you who said earlier that it's about the connections that uh, people made. That, that makes it possible to, to move forward um, as we go. So, yeah, so I hope we made a few more connections here tonight. So that's my final word. Tulu, any final thoughts? 
Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm glad to have this debriefing session. I didn't meet anyone here during iDEC, so, you know, it's nice to be able to connect with people, you know, that, that I, I didn't even get the chance to hang out with, but I've learned a lot already, so, you know, let's keep on, let's keep on hanging out. <laughs> and, and we will, over the next couple of weeks, um, be, uh, some IDEC people will be coming in and out, and uh, we'll be doing other kinds of things here, too. Um, next week, I'm actually going to, I in my brand new school, I'm, I, I, there, there's an art teacher who got fascinated by the, the work we're doing, and he said, can I get a bunch of art teachers to talk about this? So I'm going to try to do that. So um, anyway, so we'll... Going to try to keep them informal. Um, so thank you all for being patient with the what happens when we do that. <laughs> um, but um, thank you all for joining us as well tonight. Um, we uh, broadcast right here every Wednesday evening at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, um, and we've been doing that for uh, several years now. Um, and we'll continue doing it this fall. Join us any Wednesday that you're available. It's at edtechtalk.com slash TTT. And um, that uh, community has been put together by Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier of worldbridges.net. Um, thank you all, and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.